Hi everyone and thanks for coming to join me. This video is a follow-on from the last video that I prepared uh, entitled Getting the Externality Diagram Right. If you haven't seen that, go back and have a look at it and then come back and have a look at this one. Okay, in that last video what we looked at was how to depict externalities. Externalities are third-party consequences, spillover effects of a transaction. So when a when producers produce too much, sometimes they produce more than society wants. That creates an externality. That's an external cost to society. And when consumers consume more of a product than society wants, that creates a cost to society as well, or a less benefit. Okay, so these diagrams you should be familiar with. These are from, you'll recognize these from the last video if you've seen them. This is a production externality diagram. This is a consumption externality diagram. Let's look at the production one first. So in the production externality diagram, the marginal private cost and marginal social benefit represent supply and demand. So we have an equilibrium price and an equilibrium quantity produced as depicted by the market, as decided by the market. However, society has its own idea. Society says, hang on a sec, you may be producing all these cars, but look at all the pollution you're creating. Who's paying for that? There's an extra cost to that. Therefore, the, the societal cost is greater. Therefore, the marginal social cost is greater than the marginal private cost. The problem with that, of course, is that we, society, wants this to be the equilibrium output. And therefore, we have here an overproduction. Okay, so we have an overproduction here. With consumption, let's say this could be excess um, alcohol consumption or excess uh, drug abuse, that kind of thing, or smoking, anything like that which is harmful to uh, to individuals and society as a whole. So society believes that you shouldn't smoke too much, you shouldn't drink too much, you shouldn't do drug abuse, and therefore, if you do, somebody else has to pick up the cost of that, and there's a negative effect on society of you doing that, whether it's dealing with, uh, with drunken behaviour on a Friday night, or whether it's strains on the National Health Service to look after you when you become really ill. Okay, so... So that's the benefit that the consumer is getting, but society is getting a much less benefit. So, in this particular case, the market is charging that price and producing that much. Society, however, wants this to be the equilibrium po point. It wants the ideal quantity to be, to be that. And again, rather like the First diagram, we have an overproduction, and an overproduction is bad news. So we need to get rid of it. So how do we get rid of it? Okay, well there are several ways and you can get rid of it. There are traditional methods, there are traditional methods like taxation, like regulation, all sorts of traditional ways in which you can influence the consumer or the producer. But there are also behavioural ways. We could use a little bit of nudge theory. We could, we should try and make people feel guilty about doing certain things or hone in on something they would do naturally uh, and so change their behaviour. Okay, let's look at what a traditional method looks like to resolve the overproduction problem with a production externality. The most obvious traditional method is taxation. Assume now that the government imposes a tax on car manufacturers to reduce, reduce their production uh, because then that will reduce uh, pollution and reduce the cost of society. If it imposes a tax, the cost of production for the producer will go up and it will become less productive. The natural consequence of that is the supply curve will shift to the left, which we already know. So, if we impose the right amount of tax, hopefully we can get the supply curve to shift to the left to the point where it intersects with the marginal social cost. 
So we get this shifting to the left, like so. So this now is our marginal private cost plus tax. And we now have a new equilibrium. So we have that, that is the uh, supply curve, that is the demand curve. We're now producing QS and we have got rid of the overproduction. Bingo. That's called internalizing. We have internalized the externality. We've basically made the cost borne by the parties that are internal to the transaction, not external. So that's one solution. Let's have a look at the consumption externality. In this particular case, we may be more uh, inclined to address the demand because the problem is the consumer is consuming too much. We need the consumer to consume less. So again, we could use a public information campaign. We could use um, we could use a certain amount of nudge theory to make people feel guilty uh, about doing certain things. Uh, in the pandemic, or the coronavirus pandemic, for example, uh, there has been the very strong messages, advice, stay home, don't go out, don't spread the disease. That's a, that's a certain amount of nudge theory, a certain amount of some people uncharitably may call brainwashing, but we are, we are changing the behaviour. And if we change the behaviour of the consumers here, what we'll do is we'll result in the demand curve shifting inwards reduce the demand for it. If we can do that effectively, we may be able to reduce the demand sufficient to intersect with a marginal social benefit. So we may be able to cause that to shift inwards by whatever method we choose so that this becomes the new marginal, marginal private benefit plus Let's call it P for policy, whatever that policy is. Now we have a new equilibrium, and that equilibrium produces QS, which is what society wants. So again, we've got rid of the overproduction, and we've internalised internalized the externality. Hope that was useful. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye now.